What is up, beautiful people? And welcome back to another Unapologetically Mercy video. How you doing, beauties? <laughs> welcome back, welcome back. If this is your first time to Unapologetically Mercy, hey, hey, go ahead and punch that subscribe button or that like button or share. <laughs> oh. so, so, in honor of Mental Health Awareness Month, I wanted to share my story with living with GAD. So if you're interested and you want to hear what GAD is and learn about my story living with it, stay tuned and let's get right into this video. You might be like, girl, what is GAD? Like, break that down, break that down. English, English, please. GAD stands for Generalized Anxiety Disorder. And the definition from the ADAA states that GAD or Generalized Anxiety Disorder is characterized by persistent and excessive worry about a number of different things. They also mention that people diagnosed with GAD may anticipate disaster and may be overly concerned about money, career, finances, family, health, work, and other issues. Generalized anxiety disorder impacts 6.8 million people, which is about 3% of the population. Over here, I will also list some of the symptoms that you might experience if you are dealing with GAD. But, but please go to therapy and get diagnosed by, you know, a licensed counselor so they can help you figure out the best plan for you and your mental health. Okay? Now that you know basically what GAD is, I want to talk about how I got diagnosed with it and how I've been going about my day-to-day -day life dealing with this mental illness. So a few years ago, especially around 2018, 2019, I was really going through a very depressive I was going through a very depressive, very just like high anxiety, very negative self-talk or just belief in myself, self a lack of self-confidence type of time in my life where I just left a job that I felt was no longer serving me, was burning me out. I was struggling to, you know, get through the online um, college classes that I was going through and I, I actually failed a class. So I really, my self-worth was just like going lower and lower. And I just got to a point where I was just ready to go to therapy, ready to get help because I had already pre-diagnosed myself with depression because that's literally what it felt like to myself. But I decided to go to therapy. And after their first session, my therapist, she diagnosed me with GAD. And I'm like, okay, you know, that makes a lot of sense. I wasn't crazy. There was something going on, okay? So after our first session of therapy and she diagnosed me, you know, she came up with a we came up with a plan where it was just, you know, I would see her about two times, two times a month. I would see her about two or three times a month for, uh, for about, I think, two, was it six months? For about a six month time period. And I will say I'm so glad, I'm so glad I decided to go to therapy. I remember one of the first sessions that we had one of the first things that I learned from my therapist was what can you control and what you can't control like let's say let's say you know that you need to leave your job situation or your job situation is no longer serving you what of that what in that scenario can you control and what aspects can you not control so also around that time I was trying to juggle my time and my energy with you know working full-time working working full-time was in school basically full time online and I wanted to you know start my journey in the entrepreneur world which ended up being my hair business truly, truly luscious collection so at that time frame you know I was also talking to her about that and another beneficial thing up another thing that I another thing that I learned from you know just taking the time of going to therapy and being present and open with my therapist was that you know I had these great ideas but I didn't really have a plan to really execute it or if I did have a plan it didn't really have like the action steps or the little parts of the action steps for each goal that I could you know get so I could really you know achieve the result that I was really looking for and 
and plus it was like and plus it was like my first you know entrepreneur endeavor so you know it was very new to me i already was in a low you know conf self-confidence type of you know mindset i was still you know working on you know adapting more positive self-talk things into my life another thing that i added to my life to you know help me stay more balanced and less anxious living with anxiety living with um gad was i got into astrology got into personal self-help and development books one of the first books i really read was 13 things a mentally strong person doesn't do i will leave a picture of what that looks like over here and a link in the description because that was a really good um that was a really good first book for myself to really you know get to know myself i was also doing like self-discovery questions that i found on pinterest just to really get to know who i was today and what i really wanted or what i was doing in my life that was no longer serving me that was you know contributing to having more anxiety and leading to those and leading to those oppressive you know like those oppressive down Hill spirals. Another thing that I started doing that, you know, helped me stay, you know, less anxious and feeling more grounded was I would spend more time in nature and I started a garden. Being laid off last year due to COVID and and just having all that time just spent home and you know, I just decided to, you know, spend more time outside with nature and bond with nature and you know, just be one with the elements and i got and my green thumb decided to you know pop through and i decided to start gardening and that really you know that really that really can keep you in a very like grounded level-headed you know mindset it's very beneficial when you are dealing with this kind of illness or disorder so dealing with gag you can definitely have your good days and your bad days your ups and your downs and so like i really had to take every day as a new day and take it day by day because today i might be in a very good happy mood and you know very positive and very like uplifted and you know just like you can do this it's gonna be okay it's gonna work out whatever things might be coming my way and then some days it's like i'm on an emotional roller coaster like i can't stop crying i don't understand why i'm just in a mood like i'm just angry or just anxious like so some days you know it just <laughs> you never know what you can get some days you know it's very unpredictable so it can get really easy to you know beat up yourself like oh my gosh i'm more aware of my emotions and things of that nature but why am i still going through these emotions and that is just that is just something that you you know you have to deal with you know what i'm saying it just this really is what it is so now i'm just going to leave some tips if you are dealing with gad or feeling like you should go get to go to get diagnosed with GAD. So one of my first tips would be like, go to therapy, be open to therapy. If you are deciding to, you know, improve your mental health to, you know, become more emotionally aware of where you are and where you want to be, definitely have to be present and show up if you are going to go to therapy. You can't just expect to go to therapy and just be there and not do your part to be vulnerable because the only way that the therapist can help you to help you di to help diagnose you to help to help diagnose you correctly and to create a and create the best plan that would help work for you you have to be present with her and tell you why you might feel this way even if you're not even if you're not 100% sure, you are doing the homework that she is giving you or he is giving you after every session and seeing what that will do in your journey of getting to know yourself. Um, another thing I would say is incorporate different grounding exercises or tools, activities into your day-to-day -day, into your day-to-day -day, into your day-to-day -day routine whether that is, you know, self-care stuff as like a mask or like a bath. If you're into astrology and tarot or, you know, personal health and development books or just um, different things, different things that will keep you in a more positive mindset that will help your mindset become more positive over time. That is something that, you know, you have to continually work at in order for it to become a habit that you do on a regular basis. Another thing that I will say will give yourself alone time. Sometimes you cannot, 
Sometimes you really cannot give yourself to others if you are not taking care of yourself first. So make sure make sure you're taking make sure you are taking care of yourself first so that you are able to genuinely give the energy that you can give to others that you truly care about and want to see prosper or don't want to see in, in like what well, don't want to see in like different type of situation. You have to pour into yourself first before you pour into others. If not, you are going to be relying on what other people say the judgment of others and being codependent on their opinion for you should, for how you should live your life or to, to make the choices that you make. And my last piece of advice would just be kind and be gentle with yourself and celebrate yourself. Celebrate yourself for each and every win that you make, whether it's, okay, I'm going to write my journal today. What are we going to talk about? What are my wins? What are my losses? What are my, um, what are my five goals that I have for this year? What are some things, what are some situations in the past that have, you know, what are some situations or experiences from the past that might, if, that might have molded me to make these certain decisions in this certain area of life? You know what I'm saying? You have to be very open with wanting to get to know yourself in that healing process. It is not, it is not, it's not an easy process, especially when you have, you know, your anxiety and the worries of you know overthinking of the things of the past or the future or in the present just try to be in the moment and focus on what you can do in this moment and be proud of yourself for taking those little baby steps towards the big goal you know what i'm saying because that is very important so yeah you guys that's all that i really have about my experience living with dad in the comments down below, let me know if GAD is something that you deal with on a regular basis or this is your first time learning about it. Start that conversation in the comments down below, okay? Okay, and until next time, you guys stay blessed with peace, one love, and high vibrations. Continue to love yourself, continue to celebrate yourself, and congratulate yourself for all the small wins that you are making towards your big goals because you deserve every bit. Peace.